The Nintendo Switch 2 price point discussion is getting really interesting after the recent announcements from Microsoft just a bit ago and of course with the PlayStation 5 Pro. So I went back and I did a little bit of digging and I think I can kind of see where Nintendo's going to go with this, but we have to discuss it. But before we get into that, what's good everyone? OJ here. Welcome back to another video. Please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you are someone new, and click that notification bell to get my Nintendo Switch and RPG news first. And make sure you subscribe because we do have a Metaphor Refantazio Collector's Edition giveaway on PS5 that is coming up very soon. We're going to have details on how you can win that. So you absolutely want to make sure that you subscribe, like button, notification bell, and all of that so you can stay up to date on that giveaway and more. Now, Let's go ahead and jump into the actual topics here because I was crunching a few numbers and kind of looking at different things, doing some research, and people have been talking about price points of systems. The PlayStation 5 Pro was announced, and it's a staggering $700, and it's not even $700 being complete. It's removing things like a disc drive which should be a standard feature in a system i don't think a disk drive should be optional but we all know why they're doing that they're doing that because they want to nickel and dime and remove the option for people to be able to have the access to physical games used games all the stuff that sony clowned microsoft for back in 2012 or 2013 back when they were revealing the playstation for. So that's the reason why, and it is what it is. People can vote with their wallet, do whatever you want. But at the end of the day, people are looking at that $700 price tag and saying, oh my goodness, that is a lot of money. Now, I did go back and look before we get into the core history and what's happening with Nintendo in terms of where I think the Switch 2 price point is going to be. I went back and looked at the history of systems, and this is actually not the first time that we've had a $700 launch for a system. So it's happened a couple of times. There was one in the fifth generation, and that's the 3DO. That launched at $700, and that was back in the early 90s. So yeah, obviously, if you put it to today's money, very expensive, well over $1,200. And then we had the Philips CDI. You guys know about that. That was the wand of Gamelot and some of the stuff that Nintendo did with them with that. Nintendo does not even want to claim or talk about that at all. But that was actually $700 as well so pretty crazy overall but outside of that those are pretty much the two times that i can find that we've seen a system launch that high at launch other times it's been way lower than that we did get the playstation 3 that launched at 4.99 and 5.99 and woo, that was expensive at that point but even if you look at the playstation 3 that did everything you got a disc drive you got a ps1 a ps2 a ps3 you got a cd player you got a dvd player you got a blu-ray player you got all sorts of stuff in there right you got multimedia you got four usb ports it was a beast of a system whereas with the playstation 5 pro they're removing some of the features that would come standard in a premium system but let's talk about the nintendo switch 2 price point because i think that with the talk of the playstation 5 pro with the increasing of the price of games controllers now with the system and even increasing of the price of the playstation 5 the base in japan multiple times the switch 2 price point is going to be so key going forward now i don't think nintendo is looking at playstation and xbox and saying oh we've got to do this or we've got to do that or we got to make sure that we adjust for this they're on track with what they need to do they know if you look at what the switch did or looking for the playstation 5 or xbox series or pc it was about doing what you need to do to provide to your customers the way that it needs to get done that you've done for decades but making sure that you don't fall on your face like the wii u or trip at the start like the nintendo 3ds you need to make sure that you alleviate those issues and that's what they did combining their home console and their portable making sure that they have a solid release lineup of games the legend of zelda breath of the wild mario kart 8 deluxe arms splatoon mario odyssey xenoblade chronicles 2 all of those in the first year in the first number of months overall for that calendar year in 2017 that's the most important thing obviously value is important that's something that nintendo has pretty much always done because if you go back and look and we're just looking at the home consoles portables it's a little bit different but just the home console range nintendo has never been above 
$350 overall. That's the highest they went with the Nintendo Switch OLED and with another system, the Wii U. But let's go over it bit by bit here from generation to generation. The NES was priced at $180 and we're not gonna do the whole inflation thing, guys. That's not relevant right now because there's so many other factors that goes on with it. So we're just gonna stick with the launch price point. So $180 for the NES. The Super Nintendo was $200, the N64 was $200, the GameCube was $200, the Wii was $250, the Wii U was $300 and $350, and the Nintendo Switch was $300. And this is all right at launch. This was not later down the road or anything like that. This is just the price that was at launch. Now, all these systems got different bundles, different packs, price reductions, all sorts of things afterwards, like always. But at launch, these were all the base prices. So looking at that at launch and seeing what's going on here, you can kind of connect a few dots and say, okay, here's what I think. Now, Nintendo had a pretty long stretch from the Super Nintendo all the way to the GameCube where they just said, $200. It's just going to be $200 regardless. And the tech from the Super Nintendo to the N64 was a pretty big leap. And for them to price it at $200, that definitely took a lot of fortitude from Nintendo to do that because that tech in the N64 was pretty crazy for the time with the silicon graphics and everything. So I do feel that Nintendo tries to make sure that the prices are a bit lower Overall, I mean, they've never went above $350 for any system up until this point. Every other system when it comes to the big three at least, or Microsoft and Sony and even other people that have been in it, they've all went above that at some point. Uh, the fact that Nintendo has not went above a $350 price point, or at least let's just say threshold of $300 if you look at the Wii U, because it got discounted pretty quickly, and there was a $300 option. Nintendo usually stays right around there, so what I'm guessing is that they're going to evaluate this. They're going to crunch the numbers. They're going to look at what they've done over the past number of decades, but they're also going to look at the current environment and market. What is the profitability? What is the sustainability? What is the issue with what's going on right now with everything components and what can we do to actually make a profit on the system or a slight profit so we're not losing money on every system so i think that the best calculation at this point that i've seen would be about a hundred dollar price increase from the Nintendo Switch's base unit at launch. Now, the Nintendo Switch OLED is $350. I do feel that Nintendo could opt for a dual model here. They can go with one model that is $399 and then another model that is $450 or $500. So maybe you get an extra controller, you get an extra game, or there's like the online play that's included or some type of bundle or package to try to get a bit more money considering how expensive things are. Game development has went up, production costs have went up. I mean, we rarely even receive discounts on systems anymore overall a lot of these systems don't get real price drops with the xbox playstation and nintendo so i'm factoring all of that in that nintendo probably wants to have a higher option than what they did with the nintendo switch considering where things are considering the type of tech that is going to be in this system so i'm guessing they're going to roll with 399 dollars base package you get the nintendo switch 2 hybrid system you get the dock the new dock or whatever the case that ends up being and you get their new age joy cons whatever those are they're going to sell the controllers separate the pro controllers are going to be separate it's going to have complete backwards compatibility with nintendo switch one games and accessories very similar to wii to wii u very similar to gamecube to wii it's going to be like that in my opinion where you're going to have that backwards compatibility since they're going off of a successful system from before and they're using the same graphics provider with nvidia probably a custom chip this time time so i see them doing a base package for 399 and then doing an elite package or a pro package or whatever you want to call it right a better bundle for 499 and what that's going to get you it's going to get you some extra goodies maybe a game maybe there's something else bundled in there two tier models if you look at it historically don't 
always work. I mean, they've worked sometimes with PlayStation 5. It seems to be working overall with Xbox 360. It kind of didn't work. The Wii U, obviously, it didn't work. But outside of that, Nintendo really doesn't do the two-tiered model anymore. All they really do is just have that base model. Although with the NES, they had a big bundle with like Rob and all sorts of other type of stuff. So that's a little bit weird, right? Back then, they're trying to bring the industry from the crash here in the US. But with the Super Nintendo, I mean, you would get Super Mario World with that. But for the most part, they try to just stick with like a one tier model overall, not two different types of model systems or anything like that. That's the biggest thing. Even with all the other systems that they've done, they really haven't done it up until the Wii U. The Wii U was the first time. So I don't feel that Nintendo was looking at it and saying, oh my gosh, like the Wii U failed, so we're not going to do that. I think they're looking at it like, okay, well, what's going to be the best for us and also what's not going to confuse the consumer as well if we're going to do two tiers it's got to be something to where it adds value like significant value to the second tier otherwise people just aren't going to want to do it if you look at the wii u i mean it was so weird it was like a 8 gigabyte model then a 32 gigabyte model and then the price difference was 50 dollars i mean it's just like just pay the extra $50 and get the 32 gigabyte model with it, right? What's the point of having an 8 gigabyte model? You know, that's essentially the same exact thing, but it gives you a bit more memory. Plus, the Wii U supported the hard drives, right? You can plug in a big old huge hard drive and it supports that. So, to me, there was really no point in having that two-tiered model at all. And it never really made sense, which ultimately Nintendo got rid of of that eight gigabyte one. So I can see Nintendo just going with one and then later having some upgrades like a Nintendo Switch 2 OLED or Nintendo Switch 2 Pro or something like that. But we're gonna have to wait and see ultimately what they end up doing. But I do think that at the bare minimum, we are gonna see the Nintendo Switch 2 for $399. $100 over the asking price of what the Nintendo Switch was back when they announced the price in 2017. So. What are your thoughts overall on what the Nintendo Switch 2 price point could be? I think things are definitely getting interesting overall because of what's happening with PlayStation 5 Pro and the price discussion and just what's happening overall, Microsoft and what they're doing. I mean, they pretty much just doubled down. We're not dropping the price of anything, even though we're not selling like we wanna sell. We're not dropping the price of anything overall. We're actually introducing more and charging more that two terabyte Xbox Series X. So. What do you guys think about this? Let me know in the comment section below. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this video here. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you're someone new. Click that notification bell. Check out my other videos right here on screen, and we will see you for the next one. Peace.